Oh no, don't kill this guy. Said no one ever. Tokyo no Heshua. Mina Kajis no Shiborikas no Yori. Umi ni Nage de Rata. Great metaphor. Umi to a Nanika, Setsme Shinakerba Naranai. It's a lake. Filled with more salt than the merchants could ever sell. You'd think the merchants would sell all the salt for profit, but they just can't. There's just too much salt. It's that amazing. You know what else is amazing? My friend Armin. <laughs> Have I told you about my friend Armin? He's the best. Attack Titan. Is that what you call it? Is that what Eren's Titan is? That makes sense. If you get all the Titans to combine, does that give you the power of the Earth Devil or whatever? Is that the danger? Eren. Okay, so I think I was on the right track there. Well, I got good news for you. You get to try again. Don't do anything crazy this time, like... Turn your son into a titan. His, his fingers? Damn. You have to make it convincing. Interesting. Feels like he's coming out of that, that whole cycle. That ends justify the mean cycle. It seems like he's taken it all the way to its logical conclusion and realized that he's become no better than the, the enemy. So I guess this is where Grisha eats him and becomes the attack titan. Pretty cool. Maybe that's why he had to get everyone out and make them titans, so that Grisha has a easy target to eat. So he chose him because of the incident with his sister? Yeah, yeah. Well, he chose well. Very strong cycles of violence thing going on. But he's done some horrible, horrible things to get here. Yeah, and it seems like all this only to have his plan fail at the final hour. You hope that this, like, helps divert Grisha a little bit. Because Grisha was going down that same road. You gotta eat me. I know this is gonna sound weird, <laughs> but... What Oh. Oh, that's new information. So he remembered all of this. So Eren's like, he doesn't have that much time left. Interesting. Lots of lore in this episode. That's what Ymir, our Ymir, was looking at. I gotta watch this again. This is a lot of information. Alright, I watched it again. I'm still not quite sure I get it, but they're all connected. They have to be if, if one dies, a baby can be born with that power. And somehow that connection flows through the coordinate, which is Eren. As other characters have said, it's a lot of power for him to have. Yeah. Who is the Earth Devil? That's sort of my question. Yeah, but what what was that thing? The source of all living matter. Uh -huh. Very fitting statement for the show. That too. And that too. <laughs> All this. This whole thing. You're the only one now. Oh no, why do I feel like this is foreshadowing? I have a feeling Eren will be saying something similar. 
or is saying something similar. That's one of the first ideas in the show is Aaron wanting to be free. But over the show, there's been sort of a complex look at what that even means. And some of his moments of true freedom were just fighting with the scouts, right? But now that he's gotten information and once he, you know, conceivably gets outside of the walls and, and sees the ocean, if he ever sees the ocean, will it have been worth it? This guy, the owl, basically stating some of the themes of the show, right? Like anybody can be a god or a devil. There is no truth. There are just the things that, that people believe in. And that sort of duality exists with a lot of the characters or all of the characters, but it's still sort of unclear where Aaron will fall in that. But you know, I don't think he's right. It's true that people can believe in any number of things and will use those beliefs to justify their actions, but I don't think that means there's a total lack of truth. To me, it means they just haven't found good faith. You know, it's an absence of truth at a personal level. And in that absence of truth, what they have is, is bad faith. They believe in things that are not enduring, like their, their tribe or whatever story or myth that they, you know, they believe in. But there's more to be had. Like, here's the truth. These people suck, you know? Like, it's not... It's not the world that's cruel. I mean, nature is chaotic, but nature is not inherently cruel. It's it's people in this world that are cruel. And their cruelty is based on the fact that they don't have something better to believe in. This whole nature is cruel thing to me, it's just an excuse. The idea of there is no truth to me also an excuse. It just means you're not looking hard enough. It's there. As long as there's a material world, as long as there are humans that follow a life of enough similarities, enough so that we can understand each other, there is something that works. You know, there are things that work and things that work less well. And it's not arbitrary or random. We sort of already know. We have an instinct. We have a shared instinct for, for what works and what doesn't. Not only at an individual level, but at a, at a societal level. We've evolved to have mechanisms for this because we are the descendants of people who lived in societies or communities that were created by people who followed certain rules. You know what I mean? To me, that's the refuge of the weak. You know, people who aren't looking. People who aren't taking responsibility for finding what that means for, for them as individuals. And to the show's credit, I think it's aware of that because it's given us a shining example or some shining examples of people who resist that urge, who actually create beauty in, in a dark world. People who think carefully about who they want to be and avoid things like lying, not seeing people as just a means to an end, acting in a manner of self-defense that's non-hateful, making sacrifices for others. These are these are qualities that a lot of the characters embody. And, and for me, that's a more satisfying answer than like, well, it just depends on what side you're on. Anybody can believe any number of things. I mean, that is true, but that's not what's right. Well, at any rate, here he is. I feel like it's even hard to care about Eldio at this point. Yeah, he definitely took the wind out of his sails with that whole, like, everyone's a god and a devil speech. Keep this in the basement. Because he wanted to be free. I feel like it's one of those Matrix things where, you know, once you see it, once you go out into that world, you're taking on the responsibility of everything that means. But there's no going back. Aaron's original thing. The true identity of intelligent titans stemming from a power exceeding human comprehension that sleeps in subjects of Ymir, said power is inherited along with memories through paths which transcend space and time. The coordinate where all paths intersect is the founding titan. It's like the source, or some kind of direct connection to this godlike power, whatever it is, the, the devil. There's probably going to be some more there. He looks like he's aged so much, which is understandable. Hanji can't stop herself from asking a lot of questions. This is not a phase. To let you out, duh. <laughs> yeah, we only have nine people now, so you gotta pull your weight. No time to be in jail. Back to work. Long time no see. How's she doing? Looking pretty good. New hairstyle. <laughs> He's jealous. You almost forget. You almost forget what just happened in this little, like, love letter drama. Is that because of the 13 years thing? Reiner looks on jealously. Not super revealing. Oh, what the heck? She somehow infused the letter with memories? Yeah, yeah. What was that? <laughs> was it in the letter? <laughs> what just happened? That was my reaction as well. Yeah, 
いろいろあったね。Oh, that line almost killed me. Yes, Historia. <laughs> A lot has happened. I'm still not exactly sure why Ymir was okay with leaving Historia. I feel like I have to go back and watch that episode again. But one possibility is that Historia would not have a good life, or she would be persecuted or used like Dina if she were to return to the what is it called again? The other place across the sea. I feel like they're dead inside. <laughs> Yeah, it's just too much to process. Slash is doing well. Where's the Irwin parade? Still feeling the loss. Wall Maria of Dakkan, she, Chow Ogata Kyojin, no Chikara, Uba Kotori, Seko Shimasta. Not sure it was worth it. Kiga Kyojin to you, Bakemono Dake, the Areva, Donna, and Yoka, the Koto de Shoka. We're long past that now. Kabe no o wa tami kara kiyoku o ubai. Heki gai no jinrui wa horonda to omoi komase ta. I guess he's thinking he's keeping them safe. Kanarazu mitsuke dashite. Okushita oka ga shisho no kyojin o tori agero. And he did it. Oke no chi o hiku mono dewa nai Eren ni mo sono chikara o tsukaeru kanousei ga aru no kamo shire masen. Ano toki wa issun dake. Subete ga tsunagatta ki ga shita. Yeah, we haven't really explored this much since then. But at the end of season two, he destroyed his... His stepmother. <laughs> what did he just figure out? Tell me, Hanji. <laughs> what is all this phase stuff? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. remembering. This might be weird to say, and nothing really has given me any reason for concern in this scene, but I feel like they're not being tight-lipped enough about this this information. Especially with, like, ass apparatus guy. Is he really necessary? Does he have to be there? Is that what it was? It was a, the connection to, to Dina? That would explain why it only happened that one time. Yeah, that is a real danger for Astoria now. That's why he's keeping it close to the chest. Probably a smart move. But Armin already knows. <laughs> because Armin knows everything. Dina's done. Although Dina definitely got revenge for the new family, didn't she? Interesting. Seems like his solution is to tie it to something, something more meaningful, like family. Wait, what? 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 Huh? So. Huh? What the hell? What is this, some kind of like crazy cycle? What the hell was that? Cool ending. <laughs> Speaking of cycles, my god. Wait, wait, wait. What? What is going on? This has all happened before, but why and how? Why does he have... Aaron's memories. I'm assuming it's Aaron's memories. You think you're getting somewhere. You think you have a handle on it. No, you don't. You do not have a handle on it. It's all a lie. What's the truth? <laughs> Damn it. Maybe the the Earth Devil, the Devil of Earth, is Aaron. I've long suspected that that Aaron is a danger. Well, I mean, the characters themselves are are saying Aaron's a danger. He must have some power that it's not just like an earthly power to fight. Like, get all my Titan friends together and punch each other. It's got to be deeper than that. Like, he has the power of a god in some sense, like the power of creation, power of destruction for humanity. That's something that's reinforced by what Reiner and other people on his side have said. And maybe that's what the creation side of that looks like. You know, it starts with creating like an Adam and Eve type thing, or the Titans or whatever, trying to make a better world where things are fixed, but there's something fundamentally wrong with the way things start, and so there's something fundamentally wrong with the way things end, etc, etc. Although maybe there are slight changes, and maybe there is actually progress. We'll have to see. I'm guessing that'll be season four, part two. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm just wildly speculating, I could be totally wrong. But that was such a big reveal. I, like, it almost has to be Eren at the beginning, right? If this guy's talking about Armin and Mikasa, I think what we got here is one of those I'm my own grandpa type situations. It seems like Eren is in even more danger than I thought, and it's not even necessarily his fault. Like, it started a long time ago with 
with Aaron. <laughs> Assuming I'm correct. I guess what it all comes down to is like choice. You know, realizing that you have a choice. Realizing that, that freedom is, is not being dictated by the things that have come before you or the injustices or trauma you've experienced. I would say adopting something higher than the, the views of truth put forth so far where like there is no truth. It's just about what side you're on. Living more, more exemplary qualities that allow people to break out of this cruelty cycle. Even if it only starts very locally at an individual level and takes a long time to actually work or bear fruit. Also in Grave Danger is Historia, since she's now a tool. The way they posed it there was she's a tool for the military or this establishment or the guy with the ass contraption. But the way I'm thinking about it is that she's also at risk from Eren, who might seek to use his power in, in any number of ways he sees fit based on what happens next. At the end of that crazy mini arc that was episode 16, 17, and 18, I asked, well, what's next? And I think that we have the answer now. It looks like it might be a battle to like shape the world, shape the earth using the founding Titan. It's gonna take a while to digest this and think about all the all the different angles. But as I talk, certain thoughts are coming to mind. Like one of the ideas so far in these couple of episodes is that stories are used. Stories are used to make people do things and the stories are not the complete truth. And the story from the Marley side is that the Ymir people are full of evil. And that initially seems like just racism, period. And there's definitely a lot of that. I'm sure that's where most people in that society operate. But it's not inconceivable, in fact, I think it's likely to imagine that there, there actually is a real threat, and that threat gave rise to this story. And that threat is probably something like, there's a danger that they'll like destroy and reshape the world. Hence the, the justification, the evil justification for all their actions, and the, the subjugation of the Ymir people. But that doesn't mean there isn't a real threat. And I think that's been backed up by a lot of the characters, and that's sort of what I've been waiting for and what I've been expecting, especially because of characters like Bertholdt and Reiner and Annie. Kids who are doing really terrible things but force themselves to do them because they, they believe they're doing the right thing. It's gotta be something like that and I think that with that reveal at the end, I'm, I'm pretty convinced or I'm reasonably sure, although you never know, that it's gonna be something like that. It's gonna come down to something like that. So season four is setting up to be very, very interesting, but we still have one more episode of the season, right? So next will be the, the season three finale, which is incredible to even think about. But before this video ends, I gotta give a, a very special and long overdue shout out to all my patrons for all the constant support for making these videos possible. A special thank you goes to those who joined the top tier on Patreon over the last couple weeks. Benjamin Montoya, Jabez Katsak, Mikhail Rosecrans, Pola Moraga, Coral Squai, Cody A. Harkey, and Pipo. Thank you to you. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to everybody watching. Love you guys. This is uh, this has been a hell of a, <laughs> hell of a season so far, and it wouldn't be anywhere near as fun or even possible in the first place without you guys. So love you guys as always. See you very soon for the, the finale of season three. Can't believe I'm saying that.